Hello there, Writing Workshop, and welcome to the week before spring break. Um, I know this can be a crazy week, um, especially with the ACT coming up here for the juniors. Uh, to compensate for that, I figure I could try to support you in this crazy week by using one larger lesson for the entire week and giving you some room to write. It looks like a number of us in this class have some writing to do in order to catch up. I'm here to support you in that. Let's actually start this with a little devotional, and I just want to talk about Jesus in this devotional. To support you in this, I've also added in um, our March Extra Credit discussion, which is focused on Jesus. Let's take a look at it. The Life of Christ. I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit so we can read the prompt a little bit better here. So let's think about Jesus here for a little bit, and specifically how writing can draw us closer to him. We are in writing workshop after all. Our next extra credit prompt for this entire month of March, notice that it's not due until the until uh, Good Friday, Friday, April 2nd, it says beyond preparing us for college and the professional world, this course gives us an opportunity to use writing to reflect on the Christian faith. Whether you um, are, are a full believer in Jesus Christ or not, discussion is open for you. In this Lenten season, what better writing topic is there than the life of Jesus Christ? Let us prepare our hearts for Easter in early April. In a well-written paragraph, slightly longer than a normal journal entry, please reflect on your favorite story or passage from any of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. I've got John chapter 4 right here, Jesus meeting the woman at the well. Uh, as you write, please explain why this is your favorite story or passage. As, as per usual, I'm monitoring every post, whether you're posting or commenting, agreeing or disagreeing with one another. Please remember to be constructive and respectful. Obviously, we're talking about Jesus here, so... Uh, it's kind of hard to get really disrespectful in this post. Obviously, there's something wrong if you're attacking your classmates for their faith in a Christian school. Um, as a reminder, these extra credit discussions are worth up to 20 extra credit points. Um, I do need to go through and finish up my grading for February once, so some of you might see a bump in your grade um, at just at some point this week as I get caught up. The way those 20 points work, it's up to 10 points for the quality of your initial post, um, up to five points for the, each for the quality of your best two comments on your classmates' posts. Um, so posting just one post can earn you up to 10, up to 15 if you add a comment onto a classmate's post, up to 20 if you add at least two comments on your classmates' posts. Just looking at this image right here, I really like how this artist depicted Jesus and the woman at the well. Um, specifically, how they're holding that bucket together, right? Um, we notice that there's just this natural bridge between Jesus' hands and her hands, um, where he really steps down from his position of, of privilege in their society, right? He's, he's much higher than the Samaritans, being a Jew, being male, being a rabbi, being the son of God, although not everyone believed that at the time, um, being, being uh, ritually clean, to her, being ritually unclean, she was known in her community as living with someone who was not her husband. Um, she was a woman, so she was already looked down upon in that, in that patriarchal society back in that time. She was a Samaritan. She was viewed as being a second-class citizen by the Jews that lived around uh, that community. And Jesus reaches out to her and says, If you are thirsty, uh, let me give you living water so that you will never thirst again. It's one of my favorite stories in Scripture. Once again, in this Lenten season, as we prepare ourselves for Easter, um, we get to think about Jesus' death and resurrection quite a bit, especially as the Lenten season focuses on just those last 40 days, um, focuses on the end of his ministry. This also gives us a time to think about all the things that he did intentionally for those three years that he ministered on earth that are captured in the Gospels so well. And the question that I have for myself and for you is what can we learn from what Jesus did? I, th I think the Gospels are very intentional in how much of Jesus' life, how many of his actions, those, those uh, four books of the Bible show. And there's this question of, well, what are we called to do like he did? I think he very intentionally modeled life for us. I'm really excited to see what you guys write as some of your favorite stories or passages in, in uh, this discussion thread. One thing I would note, you don't necessarily have to be a full believer in Jesus Christ to participate in this discussion, right? Maybe maybe uh, you don't fully believe in what the Bible says. Um, you can still take a look at the text and see what you enjoy in that text as well. Maybe you do view the Gospels as stories that we tell that have good messages. I'm curious to see what kind of message um, that you can pull from this. Again, simply share your favorite passage, no matter how big or small. I also want you to explain 
why you enjoy this passage uh, so much. Let's take a look at today's lesson folder. Notice, week of March 8th lesson. So once again, our lesson is the same for both lessons this week. You're working on drafting your persuasive essay before spring break. I want to give you time and space to do that. Let's check it out. Notice, first of all, there is one journal entry for this week, but it is a grammar journal, copy and correct. I had a, less, a grammar lesson planned for this week, but I'm going to move it to after spring break to support you in your writing. All I want you to do is copy and correct the five sentences below. Each one contains exactly two errors that we've seen before, so I'll review here, nothing new. Um, you can make any change you like to these sentences, as long as each sentence retains its meaning. Uh, once again, this is our only journal this week, it, so it's worth a little bit more than normal as part of our weekly participation grade. After spring break, or after everyone has commented, I'll provide an answer key in the comments so you can compare your sentences to mine. I'll read these out loud, and then we'll take a look at today's lesson agenda. Number one, a shiny boulder glistening in the sun. Number two, you may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. Number three, did you see the finale of WandaVision? I mean, what a crazy ending. I can't believe they did that to her. Number four, I have a great recipe. I need these ingredients. Two pounds of ground beef, a white onion, some teriyaki, and some cilantro. Number five, my mama is mean. She said, go to your room to me. Again, take your time as you copy and correct. This is the only journal entry for this week. Back out to the lesson folder here. Let's take a look at our agenda. You're obviously watching our devotional and directions right now. We have one objective for this week. It's to draft a research paper based on your outlines. One of the things I noticed as I started looking at grading this weekend is how many outlines I still need to see. One of the reasons why I wanted to give one lesson for this week is to support you in that. Please make sure you're getting your outline done and into me, even if it feels incomplete, so I can give you some guidance on drafting. You're watching your devotional and directions video right now. This week is our drafting week for the persuasive research essay. Um, please use this time to do one of two things. Complete your outline first. I do have some outlines that I need to give some feedback on and get you started on drafting today. Uh, then work on your full essay draft in Word Online. So once you have your feedback on, once you have my feedback on your outline, get on Word Online and start drafting your full essay in paragraphs. Notice your persuasive essay draft is due by the end of Friday. My initial goal was for you guys not to have anything to write for me over spring break to give me some time to give feedback on your first drafts for your persuasive research essays. We'll be spending two weeks after break to make sure that we can revise essays, make sure all the research is properly cited, uh, make sure that all the ideas make sense and that your paragraphs um, all work together, and then spending some time editing cleaning up grammar, sentence structure, those kinds of things, before essays are due um, on April 2nd. That would give me another week to grade them before grade reports drop for the 12-week marking period. Speaking of marking periods, that also reminds me that you also have this month of March to make any changes you like to your, um, to your college application essay. I realize I still have to grade some of those for a few of you, so keep an eye out for some communication from me this week about your feedback there. Again, you can make any changes you like to your college application essay up to 100%. That will close um, at the end of this grading period in early April, April 9th. So just keep that in mind as we are um, working through this month of March. Again, my goal is for you not to have anything to write for me over spring break. Obviously, spring break would become a makeup time for you if you fall behind. All right, and sorry if there's a little weird jump in the video right there. I realized I needed to move a couple of things inside of this week's lesson folder. It's a big lesson folder, although most of it we've worked through already. You're watching our devotional directions video right now. And two of these are things that I moved from earlier lessons. So my example outline is here, along with your digital copy of your persuasive research essay outline. Once again, if I have not given you feedback yet, <clears throat> Once again, if you have not completed your outline yet, that's step one. Um, you really should be getting feedback from me before you go on into drafting for this essay. Then notice that I've provided a turn it in spot where you can turn in your persuasive research essay first draft. One thing I want to note here is that this is just a 25 point formative assignment. Same sort of grading as your outline. The way I'm grading first drafts is I'm just grading it paragraph by paragraph. Five points for your introduction, five points for each of your body paragraphs, I'll grade your three best ones if you have more than three body paragraphs. And then five points for your conclusion as well. So I'm looking for completeness on your first draft. Um, if there's an if one paragraph is not fully complete, I might dock a point or two. I want to see you developing your 
um, your ideas into a full essay in your first draft. Once again, aim to get this done by the end of Friday here. If you fall behind, you can use spring break to work on your first draft. Um, but I, I think a really great goal for you to set for yourself is to finish it before spring break so you can actually relax in this class while I give you some feedback on your first drafts. Again, it's a Turnitin link, so you should be writing your first draft in Word Online and simply uploading to Turnitin whenever you are ready. Again, I'll be using spring break to give you comments, uh, to give you feedback for improvement. Then we'll use those two weeks after spring break to get our final drafts done. Best of luck to you as you uh, work on your essay draft this week. Please reach out to me through Microsoft Teams if you have any questions. For those of you who have me in person, we'll be using our uh, class time in class this week to draft out these essays.